Hi guys, so today's video is a little bit different for my channel. Uh, I just want to touch base with you guys and show you some new knitting books that I recently picked up. Uh, pretty much on Amazon, so I'll have them linked in the description box. Those will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you purchase items through those links. Uh, I do want to say I picked them up all pretty much brand new. I think one or two I might have picked up that were like library edition so what happens is you know you have your link and let's say you use my link okay or whatever the listing um on amazon and it'll show you basically the price for the brand new book and then it'll might say like really small words under there like from 399 used or um also brand new but like from a different seller on amazon or whatever so um I generally just go for the new one because I don't trust. I'm like, what does what, what gently used really mean? And even though it has descriptors, it's a generic descriptor for like anything that they mark gently used, you know? Um, but I want to show you one book that I'll just open it right now because I have not seen it. And it was a library edition. So let's see what it looks like. Looks pretty good already on the edges. Oh, definitely a library edition, as you can see there. It still has the little... Um, uh, scan code and everything. So this was the Harry Potter Knitting Magic. So what happened is I picked up this other one first thinking it was that one I think. <laughs> so this one's Harry Potter Knitting Magic. More patterns from Hogwarts and Beyond. This one was brand new. You can see it looks pretty good. Obviously it's a brand new book. I'm gonna flip through a few of these books. That's all I'm planning on doing today and maybe maybe casting on something at the end. We'll see how much time I have. But um, yeah, I mean, this one also feels floppy, right? Where this one's nice and rigid, it's ready, you know, brand new. You can see, the, like, the binding. But, I mean, it was, like, from Charleston County Library. It was, like, four bucks. And then, I think, like, three dollars shipping or something. So, I couldn't not just buy this one. So, really quick, I just want to flip through it just to show you some of the cute things. Um, of course, you know, with this kind of thing, it's, um, what's the word? A person's property that they put on here. I'm not going to show like obviously the patterns. Um, sometimes on Amazon they'll have like look inside the book and they will share a pattern with you which is really nice. So these first few things are like creatures which isn't really my thing. Um, I was more like this. The house cardigan. I think that's really fun. Miranda's really into the Harry Potter movies right now. We're going to start reading the books. We did a little bit backwards with her with the boys. Usually they read the books I think and then went the other way but um, you know, really nice imagery, the pictures, the instruction all seem really great. These are not intro guys type of projects, okay? So if you're a knitter, great. If you're not, there might be some things in here that might be easier, like this mirrored mirror of Erised cabled cowl. Um, it has cables, which isn't the hardest thing, and then it looks like just knitting, you know. Um, it depends. You might have knit and purl, but those are also very basic things you should know if you are a knitter. Um, look at this one. It has a nine and three quarters stop on there, and just like cute, like motifs, right, from Harry Potter. Um, just a lot of beautiful things in here. Really, I just like for the inspo, and then obviously you want to try out a couple things. I'm trying to see if there's something else I can show you. Um, you know, dark mark illusion scarf. I mean, that's not the biggest deal, but you can kind of see that illusion in there. And that's what that one's about, so it has some fun things you can do with the um, stitching. And then, like, decor, it has, like, washcloths, things like that. Um, this one I'm really just... I had to get this one just because I, if I got the second one, might as well get the first one. Look at this. Miranda definitely wants a hat. So <laughs> what happens is we were at Universal Studios, and I don't know why. Miranda's very confident. We go in there, and she's like, she would like a robe. We'd already picked out, I think, her wand or something. Okay, so we go into the store, has no price tag, so I'm like, oh, this is great. <laughs> then the guy's like, oh, what house are you in? And Miranda's like, um, I'm like, oh, he's asking her, she's out, um, Hufflepuff? I'm like, oh, okay, I guess she likes Hufflepuff. I didn't know. I had no idea. You think she'd want Gryffindor, right? Yeah, so we did all the thing. We go to buy it. I'm just going to tell you they're 130 bucks. I think they're all that 130 bucks. but this was a kid's one, but I'm assuming they're all the same price because, I don't know, maybe they're not. Maybe the adult ones are more expensive. I don't know. We leave there, and, you know, she's happy with it the next day or later in the evening. We're talking about this and that. And she's like, Gryffindor? She's like, Harry Potter's in Gryffindor? I'm like, she's like, I said Hufflepuff. I'm like, well, you didn't say you... <laughs> she didn't say anything about it. She just threw it out there, I guess, because it sounds cute, right? I'm like, but you know, Hufflepuff's good for you, isn't it? So we kind of talked about why uh, that one might be good. 
So, of course, now she watches the movie. She's like, they never talk about Hufflepuff. I'm like, yeah, the movies. Okay. So, I had no idea. She was just so confident and threw it out there. I was like, oh, she knows what she wants, you know? But why would I try to convince her? Like, well, Harry's in, or, you know, Hermione's in Gryffindor. Like, I don't know. I didn't know. I thought she just already made up her mind. Ah, oh, poor girl. Oh, well. <laughs> so, anyway, I was just, uh, now I got to make her her hats and her everything is match, you know, Hufflepuff, right? Uh, but anyhow, uh, I want to show you these little guys. So Miranda's really in love with these. And she's like, oh, you have to work on these moms. So we went and we picked out at Joanne some yarns that will work with these guys, even though it's not really the thing I like to do. But you know what? Try something different, right? So Wizarding Wardrobe. I love this book. I really like. I mean, it has Newt Scalamat Sc Scalamander. <laughs> Scamander scarf. Um, you know, Ginny's hat. It has Ron's hat. It has, like, those hats with all the different um, uh, houses. You know, Hogwarts Express Cowl. Really cute. So I, I feel like this one's more stylized, more fun. I don't know. I like the things that are in here. You know, the Case of Creatures scarf. Um, really pretty. Mischief managed the Marauder's socks. I think they were so cute. In the front, they look like this. I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good, of course. I mean, just a lot of beautiful things. Follow the spider scarf. I mean, even just if you don't care about Harry Potter and you like this for like Halloween, you know? I mean, there's so much in here. The Kingsley cap. Just, I don't, I, you know, I have several books to share with you guys, but, oh, I will say that these are by Tannis Gray. And what's funny about that is, look at me, look at this bag. You guys, beautiful. Um, I didn't realize a lot of these books I picked up were by um, that same person. I don't know. Yeah, see, it doesn't even have it on the front. It just says Gray, but Tannis Gray, T-A-N-I-S. You can look her up here on YouTube. I think she, I don't know if she has videos. Um, Star Wars, Knitting the Galaxy, also by Tannis Gray. And what I like about this is that if she has um, things in here like this one. I just opened it up. Princess Leia's Hoth Snow Vest, right? designed by Stephanie Lotvin. So if she didn't design it, she does give credit to the designers, which I think is really great. So lots of, oh, how cute is that? Luke Skywalker's flight vest. Some things in here are obviously cosplay, you know, things that I'm not going to have here or do here in my house, but, um, oh, good Chewie. <laughs> the kids might like that, but there's other things in here, you know, like, again, like this cowl or whatever, you know, that I would definitely get into. I don't know what happened. I got like blue ink or something a days ago and it has not come up um even went to the beach and it still hasn't come out <laughs> so you think that that would take care of everything look at these gloves i mean you guys just the coolest stuff um uh, i don't even know i mean there's like shawl patterns oh this one's the rebel alliance shawl super cool um oh at the little mini sweaters ornaments <laughs> that's very cute so just a lot of cute ideas again not for the beginner i wouldn't say any of these books are for the beginner awesome um <clears throat> knitting with disney i think this is another one by tennis gray yep and she has another one coming out soon i think it's september october for nightmare before christmas i'm like you gotta be kidding me yeah i love jack skellington anything so i'm like oh so it's a for pre-order. I'll link it in the description box if I remember, just so you can check it out. Uh, but again, it's a pre-order. It's not out yet. But Knitting with Disney, one person's complaint on here was that, oh, she thought there would be more, like, um, charts to do, like, Mickey and other characters, but things are, like, like this. These are Ariel socks, okay? It has mermaid scale. But, yeah, I mean, it's just an ode to those things. And I don't know if she owns the like, rights to some of these patterns, right? Obviously, whatever's in here is fine. Um, I'm sure Disney would have already <laughs> taken care of that if it wasn't. But, um... I think she has plenty of things in here that have to do with motifs. Like, I mean, there are Mickey and Minnie motifs in here. I don't know if I can find one just off, you know, just... Um, let me see. Okay, at the beginning there's some characters. There's, like, some other, you know... Pascal. Okay, fine. Crafty costumes. I mean, look at the happy, sleepy, and grumpy hats. They're totally slouch hats, and then they give you the uh, letter charts for all of them so you can write whatever you want on there. I mean, something like this is kind of like throwaway pattern in my opinion. Ursula's seashell necklace it's kind of, I don't know. I mean, look at this Cusco's poncho. <laughs> I love Emperor's New Groove. I think that'd be so funny if I actually made something like that because unless you really like that movie, you're going to be like, what is that? Right here, it has Mickey and Minnie motifs in the cowl. I think that's very cute. These are really sweet. This is a set, um, 
socks and mitts. So these are like the little hand warmers, gorgeous. And look at the little socks. And then it has the little flora, fauna, and Meriwether, right? I mean, I don't know. I think they're super cute. Um, poison apple pullover. I mean, you guys. It's all, you know, traditional kind of patterns, but brought to something fun. I mean, that's how I see it. Um, look at this one, Beauty and the Beast pullover. I mean, there's a lot going on here. Very, very cute. Um, Colors of the Wind Infinity Cowl. It has like leaves and it's hard to see there, but let's say here. So pretty. Um, oh my gosh, these Alice in Wonderland gloves. Everything in here, I'm just, it's just that there's so much and it's hard, you know, like I said on Amazon, they don't show everything, but these Alice in Wonderland gloves, you have Alice, you have the little rabbit. I mean, once you have this pattern, you can put it on anything. Like, I, I don't know, I like it. I think they're really cute. I'm late, I'm late. Um, floating lantern fingerless mitts from, um, I would say from Aurora, but that's, mm, why well, am I thinking right. Aurora? Anyway, I'm thinking Sleeping Beauty. Anyway, it's Rapunzel. <laughs> there you go. Pumpkin Coach Cowl, how cute is that with the whole, like, look at that. Of course, when you're wearing it, it looks different, you know? Tiana, Dreams Do Come True tank, I mean, how cute. So, I mean, they just have a ton of things in here. I mean, headbands, I, there's just everything. Look at this, the Queen of Hearts scarf, I mean... Just a lot in here. Super gorgeous. And then I got some other stuff that's a little more random. Look at those. Mistress of Evil socks. Um, like this one. Everyone, you know, this has really high um, reviews. The Book of Pharaoh Knitting by Alice Starmore, right? Great. I mean, it's awesome. Yes, she goes through the history of, like, Pharaoh Isle at the beginning. There is not a lot in here as far as tutorial, though. I do want to show you real quick what she's like. Oh, this is how you carry color, because you have to carry color in all these things. I mean, that's how you're doing it. So you can call it Pharaoh Isle or whatever, but, like, real quick. Casting on. This is how to English knit. This is how to continental knit. Obviously, that doesn't really tell you anything. Uh, I know how to knit, so it's not a big deal. But stranded knitting, that's basically what we need to do. And this is it. That's all she shows you, and then go for it, <laughs> right? <laughs> With all this. Like, I don't... How is that a thing? So, all these books don't really talk about any of that. So, that would be the drawback. I mean, you kind of really need to know your stuff if you're getting into something like this. And it is more advanced, so I can see why they don't waste time talking about it, I guess. And, I mean, if you're doing color work, it's not that complicated. This kind of thing, it, you know, you're switching out more colors with Feral than just, like, you know, maybe on this row you're using the main color, light blue, green, and red. So, I mean, it's still four colors, right? You're kind of switching back and forth. But if you really look, there's only three here. It's different. This stuff is intense. But I'm glad to have it as a reference. I don't know that that's a book I really needed to buy. Um, oh, Outlander Knitting. This It was just a recommended, and I thought, oh, I like that. I love just old school, like, knit patterns, so, or things that have to do with whatever it is. I haven't watched this show. I have no idea anything about it, but look at the little cow. So cute. Or cape, should I say. Um, this is obviously a larger thing. I mean, these beautiful socks. I don't really knit socks, to be honest, because... I find them like to be itchy, a little bothersome, <laughs> especially if you crochet them, they're going to be thick. So knit, I've done a couple of pairs, but like I just won't wear them. But you know, maybe we'll find some new patterns. Uh, River Run Shawl, this is so pretty. Um, do they have a picture of it? I feel like they have a picture of it. Yeah, here. I love that. So it's just, you know, looks like stuck in it or whatever. And then down here it has that beautiful lace hanging off. Look at this cool hat, or tam, if you will. This one is a really, really pretty book. Uh, very classic designs. And they're patterned after whatever this outlander is. You know, again, this is essentially fair isle or color. And they do not talk about it. <laughs> they're just like, oh yeah, do this, and then switch out to that, and okay. That one has to do with some dress that somebody wore, so it's like inspo from that. I mean, look how pretty this is. Anyhow. A lot of this is just inspo, but the Disney ones and these other fun ones are definitely things I want to get into. This one right here, I had to grab. That'll be the last one I show you guys. That's the last one I have here with me. Knitting the National Parks. Now, this same person put, came out with Knitting California, I think, Parks or something. Or maybe Knitting Across California, something like that. Nancy Bates. Um, look how gorgeous this is. And this is the one that got me, this Alaska one. Um... She has a website. You can buy her books there. Obviously, like I said, I got this on Amazon. You can do the pre-order for the California one. She does have some California patterns already. She'll sell, like, um, 
bundles that have to do with like um, you know whatever you need for this hat and even the little tag if you wanted so but they're all like sold out so like this one's called Acadia right for Maine it looks like birch trees and I'm like that is so cool so this is a very simple one really easy you're just casting on you're doing your ribbing and then you start kind of incorporating some black and some gray it might be the same yarn that well no it's two different yarns I was gonna say it might be the same yarn that has that coloring to it but no it's Malabrigo yarn which actually I grabbed some I grabbed it on um, Amazon will show it to you right now after this because this is basically the one I've been waiting to start off uh, with some of these hats. So this one's New River Gorge in West Virginia, Shenandoah, I mean look how pretty. And so she has like an image of where she got her inspo and then you know from there Biscayne, Florida, how pretty is that? The colors are gorgeous. Congaree, South Carolina, I don't even know what that is but it's very pretty. I love those trees. It looks like a marsh doesn't it? Like something old school like that? or where it was swampy, I don't know. Um, dry tortugas in Florida. I mean, the Everglades, just the prettiest patterns. I, even if you don't know what it's dedicated to, the colorways are so pretty. Mammoth Cave in Kentucky. Um, I mean, look at this Virgin Island one. And some of them have like extra work on top to make like little flowers or, you know, whatever. My Badlands in South Dakota. Cuyahoga Valley, Ohio of course, Gateway Arch. Look at the little people. <laughs> just so cute. Um, just so well done. I mean there's tons of them I'm kind of skipping over. Indiana Dunes. But um, she has some California ones in here too. But this one, and you can see the book is like, I was reading all about it. And I'm like, this is what I'm going to do. Why not? I'm going to jump in, <laughs> do this cat my one uh, for Alaska. I love the little bears. It has little salmon up there. I think this is so cute. So hopefully it works out for me. Um, I hardly do color switching, color changing. So we'll see. Look at the Kanai Fjords. I mean, how pretty and like crisp. So a lot of these, she's asking for Malabrigo yarns and other fancy yarns. And and they are not inexpensive. I mean, I think I ended up spending about 80 bucks on yarn just for that hat. So it better come out nicely. <laughs> and um, I think it'll be great. Uh, and if I like it, you know, and then it's worth it, then great. I just wasn't able to find other yarns that I thought were going to look as nice. Um, so I, I went with her suggestions, you know. Um, Redwood, California. Aw. She has one in here for like, um, what's it called? Uh, Joshua Tree, I think, or is that somewhere else? I thought that was in this book. It's pretty cool. Like, even this one's just one color, just kind of fun. Um, but anyway, uh, let me grab those yarns that I just mentioned that I did pick up there on uh, Amazon and uh, perhaps we'll cast on. So, like I said, most of the yarn for that cap my hat was were Malabrigo options. One of them I couldn't find the Malabrigo yarn on the site so um, I just ordered something that I hope is similar this is the thing about ordering online these I picked up just on my own I just for Miranda's um, Hufflepuff hat it feels really nice Valley yarns um, not expensive but these did have shipping because I bought them on Amazon but it was through a seller and but even at that I think it was four dollars shipping and they all ship for the four dollars ones of four bucks each one you know so um, even though if you buy one it's gonna be four dollars shipping the other uh, ones were the same so that's really great actually and I wanted to feel it first and this feels really nice so I think this will be great and if it is then I will continue buying that because that feels good um, so these are the ones for the cat my hat let me see if I haven't opened this one yet they came from all different sellers <laughs> because again who's carrying what in the specific colors so Malabrigo yarn uh, this one is called lettuce I don't remember if she asked for lettuce she might ask for something else but I need a light green and a dark green basically so I just went with whatever I could find on Amazon without getting too crazy these are like 16 to 20 dollars a hank and that's typical I don't think you're gonna get Malabrigo yarn for much cheaper than that but again this is what's weird it says it's like fine or from, what is this one this feels worsted I was gonna say it doesn't feel like fine hmm, interesting um, they might describe it differently and now there are Malibu yarns that are the same color in different weights, but I, I for sure bought the weight that she mentioned, so I might be getting my projects mixed up because yeah, I had to order Miranda's yarns. So there's that one. This is cyan, so pretty. And as you can see, they're just like dyed, obviously, the way the white kind of comes through a little bit, or the beige color, whatever the initial color is underneath. Um, this one is Va. 
whole grain is one I have over here and apparently whole grain people use it all the time but look how pretty that is and I hope these are color fast oh my gosh this one scares me because it's so dark and pretty look at that definitely have to cake them up with my yarn winder um, whole grain this one right here they have it in again different weights well they have probably all of them different weights but this one is a very popular yarn I have a feeling because um, it was listed many many times and look at look at that at the end it's a very much wool super pretty machine washable gentle cycle dry flat um, that's the one for the little salmon that are like in the hat they use this color which I thought was interesting it's a little bit pinky a little purple and then I think I needed a brown and this is where I got this one uh, it just says wool and it looks not great I might have to change my mind if I use this in this project because these are so nice and fine to kind of have this mixed in there I don't know but we don't need a lot of this that's why I was like yeah that's fine um, it feels nice it's just not the same I mean you can tell this is just different stuff the way this is made look at I mean it's like machined I don't even know it says wool size 4 just like the other one that's basically what I was looking for if you're making substitutions you need to make sure they're about the same weight look at the yardage do the math if they're different kind of yardages that way you know like okay this is this is gonna be really close you know if not exactly the same so that's why I chose this and there's plenty of it and it was inexpensive <laughs> so there it is so that's for my cat my hat and then the other one's for Miranda's um, hat so fun stuff uh, let me think about possibly casting on I don't know if I'm ready for that but I'll be right back I don't want to be a tease but <laughs> I think what I'll do is I'll cast on Miranda's hat, but I'm not going to do it in this video because I still need to wind these and I hear all my kids are like waking up and Miranda's probably bound to wake up in the next minute or two so it just won't work out because you do need at least a few minutes to wind and then cast on. So I'll do a whole other video if you guys are interested in that. Uh, I'm going to use this uh, Valley yarn. Um, the, oh, they feel so nice. And then um, just like I said, you know, cast on brim with smaller circular needles. So we'll talk all about that. Um, casting on 136 probably because I'll probably make a kid. I'm wondering if I should make it a teen size though. If I'm already at it, you know. It's only 14 stitches difference. Mm, we'll see. I'll do the 136 and see kind of what that looks like. <laughs> and then that will give me an idea. It does give you measurements here for the different sizes that you might be able to make. But uh, I just want to make sure um, with this particular yarn that it's going to work out nicely. And this is interesting. She says to use the twisted German cast on method, which I have seen. It looks tricky because it's not just casting on like you normally do. It's like this, this, and then switch it back and then put it back on. I don't even know. It's not something I'm super interested in learning. But uh, if they're recommending that, then that's probably something I have to do also. So next video. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Uh, keep an eye out tomorrow or at midnight, basically, for the Spellbinders club launches, including two new clubs, you guys. So um, you'll see all about that. And I'll see you all at the next one. Links will be in the description box. And have a great day. Bye now.